Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. So today's video is all about adventure packs and which ones you should buy if you are a new player. These are this is going to be my my list of recommendations if you're you're a brand new player or if you are someone who's only been playing for a short period of time and you don't you're kind of getting sick of the free to play content or you want more stuff to do other than the free to play content. Uh, these are the quests that in my opinion are the best values to buy. Now I want to be clear that this list here is not my favorite personal favorites. This is the quest that I think are going to be best for the most players, the most newer players in terms of um, factors like fun, quality of loot, uh, quality of the experience points you can get at the, these adventures. Uh, also just the quality and quantity of the content and also the popularity of the content, the ease of getting groups with the content. So those, those are the main factors I'm considering. So uh, also I want to say before I get started is uh, if you are brand, brand new, uh, there's there's a lot of free content in this game. As I mentioned here on the screen now is actually a list of all of the free quests in the game. And there's going to be a link below in the description. So if you're brand new, just starting, you don't have to buy anything yet. There is a ton of free content in this game. Uh, DDO has a level 30 cap currently and free content is plentiful all the way up to level, you know, 15, 16, 17. So you can play through half the game without having to buy anything. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I have to mention before I start is that you don't actually have to buy content individually. There is a VIP option in this game. You can choose to rent the content instead, and a VIP sub will give you access to all adventure packs except the expansions, which um, we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, VIP runs anywhere from $100, $100 for 12 months to, to $30 for three months to $15 for one month. So you could pick maybe the $30 for three months and just try stuff out if you want. That's an option. I also have an entire video discussing this option, uh, VIP versus premium versus buying stuff individually. If you want to check that out, I'll put that in the, the description below uh, where you can learn more about that. But with that said, and I've said enough, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with the actual list. My first pick on this list is Tangle Root Gorge. Now, Tangle Root is a low-level adventure pack. It has adventures spanning from levels 3 through level 7. It also has a heroic wilderness area. Now, there's two main reasons why I have picked this adventure pack. Reason number one is it has excellent XP. Now, the quests themselves can be a little bit repetitive. A lot of them consist of running through a basically the same area multiple times, but it is very, very good XP. You get a good group together, you can get a lot, a lot of XP, and it seems to be popular as well at low levels to, to level. Now, in addition to that, it has some really good loot as well. A really good piece of loot is the Visor of the Flesh Render Guards, which is a very low minimum level clicky. It is actually minimum level 5, and it has a Death Ward clicky on that on it, and Death Ward is a spell that protects your character from insta-death spells in the game. And this is a clicky that's useful not just at low levels, but all throughout the game. And if you are not, say, a divine class, um, you, your character probably cannot cast Death Ward. So this is one of the best ways to get Death Ward and definitely one of the earliest ways to get Death Ward in the game, which is an extremely valuable spell in DDO. So these are the main reasons Tangle Root Gorge is a good pick. And if you want something at low levels to supplement the free-to-play content, this is definitely a good pick. My next pick is Delira's Tomb. Now, Delira's Tomb is a low-level adventure pack. It has adventures spanning from levels 5 through 11. It does not have a wilderness adventure area. Now, one of the reasons this pack is so popular and so well-known throughout the DDO community is it is actually narrated by Gary Gygax. The tomb opens up into a larger space. The only content in the game to, to be narrate, narrated by him. Um, which is just awesome to have in the game. If you're a pan of pen and paper, you know, it's a really nice thing to, to see and experience in game. In addition to this, Delirious has a good XP. It's very popular at low, low to mid levels uh, with the community. In addition to that, it has one of the most useful pieces of gear throughout the entire game, which is a trinket called the Voice of the Master, which adds 5% XP uh, to your character on any kind of XP you get in the game. You know whether that's ending a quest or get, completing an optional, completing wilderness objectives, whatever you complete, it adds five percent XP. So that's useful throughout the entire entirety of DDO, and a lot of people 
Um, now, there are some other ways to get that uh, later on, but a lot of people use this trinket throughout, even at level cap, um, consistently all the time. So it's a very good piece of gear, so you can't go wrong with these dungeons. They're also rather fun. They are very much undead themed. If you like that, if you like classic TND, if you like that kind of nostalgia, can't go wrong with this pick at low levels. My next pick is Three Barrel Cove. Now, Three Barrel Cove is a, a very sunny type of um, piece of content. It, it has throwbacks to Pirates of the Caribbean. It's very much a pirate themed adventure area. It is uh, it consists of quests from levels five through seven, and also it has epic version of this this most of the quests at level 25 it also has both a heroic and an ep epic wilderness area so there's tons of content here for your money you get both heroic and uh, high uh, epic level content i think the epic level content uh, definitely being the the shining gem of the two now as i've said th this area is very unique in terms of ddo the the pirate themed area you don't see that too much now you see see it a little bit throughout the game in places like how house dean dean house deneth but uh, it's pretty uh, unique in that comparison very pretty piece very pretty area and it has also in addition to really good xp especially in epics it does have some of the best loot in the game specifically it has the curse blade of jack jibbers which is an extremely useful item in ddo it can it is an, a, a trinket that can be used at any level it ha, has no has minimum level one uh, and it lets you raise yourself from the dead as a wraith so this is one of the the best pieces of, uh, of gear to have uh, throughout the game on on any character very very useful so definitely through bulk of if you're looking for a pack that can provide you with uh, some good loot as well as good xp at a variety of levels you can't go wrong my next pick is vault of night now vault of light vault of night is a adventure pack consisting of adventures from levels 8 to 10 and there's also epic versions from levels 21 to 22 and in addition to that it has one raid now this is the the, the first of the next uh, this and two more adventure packs to follow on my list or what i consider the workhorse packs of ddo that means it's just a huge amount of content for your money it provides a ton of xp a ton of content a great way to level your character a very useful way to level your character so that and that's what vault of night is it's a it's an adventure pack located in house k they're very easy quests to get to uh, very quick to get to the raid itself is still even run sometimes uh, there is some really good loot in this pack too the the shining gem of this this pack is the sword of shadow which is a great sword that's very much desired and people uh, still run the raid even though this is an older piece of content specifically to try to to complete the crafting for that sh sort of shadow so it's a great so it's it's excellent for loving in heroics if you're someone who wants to say tr your character which means you can take your character and go back to level one with in exchange for getting some bonus permanent bonuses to your character you know consider this pack so it's just an overall really good pick for xp uh, xp mainly my next pick is the ruins of giant hold giant hold is the second of what i call the workhorse packs it has content from levels 13 to 14 and also it has epic versions of this content from uh, levels 24 to 25 it also has a heroic wilderness area and an epic wilderness area and in addition it has two raids now this content is just it's just so much it's so much content it's just a, a great the wilderness area is very good it's very fun very fun pack in my opinion because it as the name would suggest it consists of giants so there are all kinds of huge enemies huge giants here to slay in this area it's a just great con great content for leveling the raids i will say they aren't run a whole very much anymore the loot in the raids is quite outdated at this point but it's still a really good pack to have if you want a TR. It provides great heroic leveling content as well as great epic leveling content. My next pick on the list is Necropolis Part 4. And not Parts 1 to 3, just Necropolis Part 4. Necropolis Part 4 consists of levels uh, content on levels from levels 14 through 15. In addition, it, it has epic versions of this content from levels 29 through 30. It has two raids, one that's heroic and one that is epic and it has a heroic wilderness area and an epic version of this wilderness area as well uh, 
The last of the workhorse of workhorse packs. It's just a huge amount of content at a variety of levels. The the gear is a bit outdated at this point, but it's still pretty good for your kind of high epic levels. If you want something to level, if you're going say you're you're doing a lot of reincarnations and such, and going through these um, through your mid twenties kind of high twenty levels a lot. Uh, not not by any means must have gear anymore, but still solid gear that's not too hard to get. Uh, the raids are not run much anymore. Um, now, the Heroic Abbot raid still has some desirable gear that some people will occasionally run it for. Um, in Mark of Death, which is the, the legendary raid, it still runs sometimes, or uh, I think I believe it's actually an epic raid. It's still run occasionally, but generally the loot's pretty outdated, so you won't see those, those much, but still the 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 pack itself is just again a workhorse pack tons and tons of content if you want to play this game and play it over and over with different characters or or to go through different reincarnations my next pick on this list is the veil of twilight the veil of twilight is a an adventure pack probably the most popular adventure pack uh, in in the game's history i would say uh, overall and it's probably the probably the what i would consider the the peak of ddo in terms of when its end game was the veil of twilight probably the the peak of ddo i would say uh, in terms of its popularity now the veil of twilight has has content quests from levels 15 through 18 and from 31 through 32 it has a heroic wilderness area it does not have an epic wilderness area but it ha has actually an additional heroic area wilderness area on top of the the veil it has a in addition to the Vale Heroic Wilderness Area, it has a Subterron Wilderness Area as well, which is located in the Marketplace, and it has three raids. Now, if you want to reincarnate, and that's your thing, and you want to go through the Heroic Levels a lot, um, say you, you want to build a great caster or something, and, and you want to run through lots of caster past lives um, to, to get your DC bonuses from past life feats, this is one of the best packs to have because Heroic Shroud Raid offers still offers some of the best heroic gear now even if you don't want to uh, tr a lot it still offers heroic shroud offers some great gear that's useful at any levels such as uh, you can craft raise dead clickies which lets you raise your your uh, raise your party members from the dead uh, without having to have the spell so you can raise them as a fighter you know as a paladin as uh you know as a ranger you don't have to be uh, you don't have or barbar bar barbarian also displacement clickies lets you class uh, cast displace on yourself which gives you a your, all enemies a 50 percent chance to miss your character these type of things are really really nice to craft and they're not too hard to craft uh, and the veil of twilight still has legendary shroud which still has good gear for for legendary content and is still run fairly you know if, i'm not going to say it's run a lot but it's still runs somewhat often so it's overall just a, a really good pack as well for XP. Uh, people run this a lot, kind of at your later heroic levels, say from like, you know, levels uh, 16 through through 19 or so. People run Veil a lot, so it's a very popular pack as well. So definitely a good pick. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the last few picks, the last three picks on the list, which are all expansions. So the first pick is the Menace of the Underdark expansion. Now the Menace of the Underdark is... DDO's first ever expansion. It has content from levels 21 through 24. It has one raid and a whopping four wilderness areas. Now, Menace of the Underdark, in my opinion, is a mandatory purchase if you want to play levels 20 and above because it includes uh, epic destinies. And epic destinies are essentially enhancements for your. Uh, for your epic and legendary levels, that's that means level uh, levels past twenty. Uh, you have to to have those. If you do not have epic destinies, your character is not going to be good at all. You have to have epic destinies in order to have a character past level twenty who isn't terrible. Now you can also buy epic de destinies from the store separately, but it's not really financially is not the best deal. It's much better to just buy Menace of the Underdark because it, it is affordable and it is often on sale. And you you do need should be patient and wait for a sale. It is often on sale for 50% to 75% off. Now it's worth noting that this content is not available. Uh, well, it, it, it's sold in the DDO market, where, which is where you can often get those deals. I believe you can also buy it in the store optionally, but uh, the DDO market is where you can get those deals, and that's probably the best place to buy it, which is uh, a store separate from the actual in-game purchasing. If you, if you, you know, I'll put a link below in the description just for if you're new and you don't know what that is exactly, it'll it'll point you to it. 
Uh, but Menace of the Inner Dark just it has a ton of content. Uh, it's the the introduction and uh, to to the Forgotten Realms and DDO. Uh, once you hit epic epic levels, it's it's really the first thing that most people a lot of people go to. Just just a great piece of content. It's I would say probably. Um, it, that this and Ravenloft are probably the best quality content I think DDO has ever made. It was made at a time when when DDO had a lot of staff and, and was really really popular. Um, it is it is height of its popularity was definitely um, from the, when the times when say uh, I would say from when Shroud was in game at level cap twenty through the Menace of the Inner Dark release. I would say that was probably the ca the peak in terms of popularity of DDO. So um, this this is really good content. I would recommend it. The the raid. Uh, the raid uh, caught in the web, I will say, unfortunately, is not that great. It's just kind of probably the low point of the pack. It's not run really ever anymore. So you won't get run the raid a lot, but the content, it doesn't matter because the content really is that good. It's very, very, very good quality. Can't recommend this one enough. And again, it comes with really must-have goodies like Epic Destiny. So if, if you're going past level 20, I would say this is the first thing you should buy. Next pick on the list is the Mists of Ravenloft, which is DDO's, as of the date of this video, the newest expansion. It won't be the newest expansion for long, as uh, a new expansion, Masterminds of Sharn, is set to release as of today. It's set to release uh, on May 14th. But the Mists of Ravenloft expansion uh, came out in late 2017. It has content from levels 10 to 12 and levels uh, 31 to 32. It has a heroic wilderness area and a legendary wilderness area, and it has two raids, but these two raids are legendary only. There are no heroic versions of these raids. Now, uh, the Mists of Ravenloft expansion currently has the best gear in the entire game, uh, but that will probably change soon with in the next month with Sharn coming out, but as of right now, it has the best gear in the game, and even after Sharn comes out, it's probably still going to be really good gear. So it's right now it is the end game in DDO. So it's it's really something you want to buy if you want to engage in the end game in DDO. You'll you'll want to buy Mists of Ravenloft. We'll see how that changes when when uh, Sharn comes out. But I still have a feeling that Ravenloft still is going to be played in the future. It's extremely extremely popular. It's great quality content. As I said, with it this in Menace of the Underdark, I would say is the best quality content they've ever made. It has a very spooky atmosphere, very reminiscent of the Mists of Ravenloft uh, pen and paper, which obviously is based on Ravenloft in pen and paper. So if you are a pen and paper player who enjoyed that, you'll get a lot of nostalgia. You get a lot of fun from seeing how they translated the pen and paper version of this to DDO. Um, you can buy this from the DDO market, just like the Menace of the Inner Dark and any other expansion. And also look out for sales for this. Now, this this is on sale certain times during the year, particularly uh, Black Friday type areas is when they usually uh, definitely put the the expansions on sale from uh, in the past at least that's what they've done and there are usually some other times throughout the year where they do that as well but normally the holidays you'll definitely see this stuff on sale so keep an eye out for it if you are new to the game and you think you're going to continue in the future and try to catch it on sale my next and last pick is the upcoming masterminds of sharn expansion and as of the making of this video it is not out yet so i can't give details but uh, considering everything we've heard, it's going to be a good expansion. I, I would be shocked if it was not. Uh, from what I've heard, it's going to have uh, a power creep in terms of gear, so it's probably going to have the best gear in the game. And it's likely going to be the end game for the next couple of years, just as Miss of Ravenloft was. R Miss of Ravenloft really has been the end game focus uh, of end game characters from really from. Uh, you know, level uh, really from the end of 2017 all the way through, which is going to be mid 2019. So I can see Masterminds of Sharn being the focus of the end game for players from, you know, middle 2019, probably all the way until like 2021, possibly, uh, just depending what they do in the future. But it, it's it's going to be a great pick for sure. It's going to be super popular, unless it's a dud. But I I really don't see it being a dud based on all the development news we've gotten. So, yeah. Masterminds of Char when it comes out, you know, look for sales on the, if you're watching this video sometime in the future, maybe if you're watching this later in 2019, look out for sales um, near the holidays if they have one. Just uh just yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a great pack to pick up. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you got some ideas if you are a new player looking to buy some new co new content. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any feedback, 
uh, you know, please leave that below. I know there's going to be some people who might say things like, you know, where's Sands of Menectarum? Where is this adventure pack that I like? And uh, this list is not, you know, it's just my opinion based on feedback, not only for me, but also the community. Uh, so if you have a different opinion, not necessarily wrong, but I think you can't really go wrong with the, the 10 I've recommended here. I think they're all good picks for sure. Um, so that's going to be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Take care.